Dear teachers and friends, my name is Xi Jue, and I'm delighted to present to you my FYP towards superior control in automatic face editing with generative adversarial networks. This is an overview of my FYP. Just as my thesis suggests, automatic face editing refers to face editing being done automatically given the user input, and superior control refers to two things. First, the user is able to control the extent of editing, and second, the user is able to control the area to be edited. And this is a screenshot of my demo application in action. I will provide a more detailed video later. And these are the areas that I intend to cover in this video. First of all, let's move on to some background knowledge. Computer vision is an important aspect of our daily lives. From trivial tasks like OCR scanning to complicated missions like automated driving, computer vision algorithms are an important part of them. And image synthesis is an important field of computer vision. Generated adversarial networks achieve remarkable results in image synthesis. Adversarial network refers to a pair of competing networks. D stands for the discriminator, while G stands for the generator. We can see in the famous min-max function of the network, D will always try to maximize the value, while G always tries to minimize the value. As the training approaches the end, the network converges, and a pair of discriminator and generator is obtained. Generated adversarial networks have evolved drastically over the years. Some of the notable evolutions include PGGAN, which allows synthesis of high-quality images, and StyleGAN, which provides superior control towards something called styles, and local editing, which refers to the transplantation of a certain part of the reference image into the source image, is what this project is exploring. In fact, local editing could be far more than just a tool for content creators like photographers and video editors. It can also be used in areas like preserving privacy, digital forensics, and also areas where not enough data is given, for example, facial emotion recognition. One key area of local editing is the generation of masks, which refers to the area to be transplanted. And in face editing, face parsing achieves the generation of the masks. Face parsing refers to the segmentation of an input containing human faces into semantically meaningful areas, for example, nose, eyes, or ears. In recent years, the emergence of a technique called semantic segmentation have significantly boosted the performance of face parsing. Now let's move on to the methodology section. The network used in this project is called StyleMapGAN. The only difference is that the style map GAN adds a reshape layer in the conversion of latent space. Hence, the resultant latent space has an extra space dimension, which enables higher controllability. A detailed diagram on how the generator works can be seen on the right. And figure 5 illustrates the local editing process using the network. We can see that both the source and reference images are passed into the latent network and selected based on masks. Then a union operation is performed. The resultant image will then be generated based on the resultant latent space using the generator. Moving on to face parsing, BISE net is a state-of-the-art technique in semantic segmentation. By tackling specific problems of its ancestors, it is able to achieve a good balance between accuracy and time consumed. Moving on to the dataset. The datasets used in this project is Syllaba HQ and FFHQ. The Syllaba A HQ datasets come with a pre-labeled masks, but masks are generated for both datasets. For the test sets, 220 pairs, which means that 500 images are randomly selected. Figure 8 provides an example of sample images and generated masks on the right. Now, let's move on to the next section, which will explore the capability of our network. We can see that three sets of experiments are conducted. The only difference between set A and B is whether the masks are pre-labeled or generated, and in set C, a completely different dataset is used. This will test for the transferability for both our face parsing model and our network. 
a comparison of pre-labeled and generated masks is shown on this slide. In addition, we can introduce a quantitative metric called IOU, which is shown on this slide. We can see that in all areas, a good IOU value is achieved, indicating that the generated mask can have the performance that rivals pre-labeled ones. This can also be validated by the experimental results. This is a result from the experiment set C using the FFHQ dataset and generated masks. We can see that they are of high accuracy. And the figure on slide 20 is a summary of the local editing results. We can see that the part, which is covered in red, is successfully transplanted to the original image, no matter whether there are nose, lips, ears, etc. Finally, let's move on to the demo application. Let's move on to the video demonstration. Firstly, we will need to run the Python script on the server, which can be any computer. We can see that we need to select the reference and source image, as well as the editing region. There are two modes available in this demo application, interpolation mode and normal mode. We are now in the normal mode. We can see that after clicking on the arrow button, the resultant image is generated. Now let's take a look at the interpolation mode. Doing the same thing, adding the reference and source image and select the editing region, we notice that there is a sliding bar below the generated results where we can choose the degree or extent of editing. This is a sequence diagram of the demo application. I am in Flask as the backend. The reason that I choose Flask is because the neural network is also in Python, hence better connectivity. Also in Flask, I'm able to squeeze both the front-end and back-end in one single file, hence providing better readability. And I have also measured the time taken for the task to be performed for the demo application. We can see from the table that all the tasks is able to be performed in reasonable time. Finally, I'll briefly talk about how I managed to get the interpolation mode of this application working. Slide 25 provides a comparison of the original local editing process and the augmented local editing process. We can see that an additional step is added. In the additional step, the resultant latent space is determined by a weight of both the source and reference latent space, which is determined by interpolation steps. As a result, we are able to get a series of latent space with interpolation, and feeding them to the generator, we get the set of images with interpolation. The figure on slide 26 shows a result of local editing with interpolation. And this is the end of my FYP video. Thank you for listening.